video, we're going to look at rate of change again and how it relates to a line, how the average rate of change relates to whether something is actually linear. We're going to do this in the context of Netflix subscriptions, and we have a graph of data, both U.S. data and international data. I'm just going to use the U.S. data for this problem, so I'll just describe that data. In early 2012, after the first quarter of 2012, we have about 23 million Netflix subscribers. By the time we get to 2017, we have about 50.85 million Netflix subscribers. And the growth looks pretty much like a straight line. So the question is, is it a straight line? Let's find out. I've gone ahead and estimated the data for 2012 to 2017 using the end of the first quarter as a measure, since that's where the graph starts. The number of subscribers counting up from 2012 to 2017, going year by year, is 23.41, 29.17, 35.67, 41.40, 46.97, and 50.85. Now we're going to calculate the average rate of change for each of those time intervals. And this is where it's important to remember that we need to know which is the dependent and which is the independent variable. So the year is the thing we can carefully control in our observations. So the year is the independent variable. The Netflix subscribers in millions, that's the thing we are observing. So that's the dependent variable. And when we do a rate of change, that's the change in the dependent variable divided by the change in the independent variable or delta dependent over delta independent. So in this case, that's going to be change in subscribers over change in time. And in our problem, the change in time is always going to be one year because we do have nicely spaced data and it's always one year apart. So if we're counting time in years, which I think we should totally do. So this is time as the years since quarter one of 2012 then that denominator is always going to be one for us. So all we have to do is the change in subscriptions over one. Let's go ahead and calculate the change in subscriptions for each of those data. All we really have to do now is subtract and divide by one or just subtract the values. So the first one, I'll just write out the calculation. It's 29.17 minus 23.41. And when we do that calculation, we get 5.76. We do that same subtraction pattern over and over. So for the next one, 35.67 minus 29.17, and that gives us 6.5. The next one, 41.40 minus 35.67, that gives us 5.73. The next one, 46.97 minus 41.40, that gives us 5.57. And last, 50.85 minus 46.97, which gives us 3.88. Now let me just repeat just the rates. We've got 5.76, 6.7, 5.73, 5.57, and 3.88. And you can see that they're not exactly the same. But three of them are close to 5.6 or 5.7. And then we have one that fluctuates way up from that and one that fluctuates way down from that. And so for real world data, this is pretty consistent. It's not too bad. In fact, I thought I would calculate an average for this data just to see what that was. And so if I add up all five of those numbers and divide by five, I get an average of 5.5. So you can see that 3.88 number really brings the average down. Now, for something to be linear, the average rate of change does need to be reasonably constant. And so is this one linear? And I would say that from my experience with real world data, this is not too bad uh, of a data set. So I'm going to I'm going to go with it's reasonable. Is it exact? No. But is it reasonable? Yes. The average is around three of the values that are in the set. So I think that's pretty good. Next, we're asked to predict how many subscribers Netflix would have after the first quarter of 2019. Now, we know how many subscribers Netflix has in 2017. That's 50.85 million. If we add 5.5 million every year, then we would add 5.5 million in 2018, and we would add 5.5 million in 2019. 
Adding that up, 50.85 plus 5.5 plus 5.5, we get 61.85. So we're predicting that they will have 61.85 million subscribers in the U.S. in 2019.